All right, Rachel, uh, this session is being recorded and we are live, uh, social media marketing. All right. All right, so I would say hello and welcome to our attendees, a lot of interest in this webinar. Um, why don't we go to the next slide? Oh, did I? All right, here we go. All right, it's presented, uh, brought to you by Social SEO and Boulder SEO Marketing. And hey, Rachel, I'm going to let yourself introduce yourself. Absolutely. Right so good afternoon or good morning, wherever you all are. Uh, my name is Rachel Dankoff. I'm actually the social media manager here at Social SEO. I've been working with Social SEO for about three years as their social media manager and also have some experience in the search engine optimization world. Um, but, you know, total five years of digital marketing experience. So super excited to, you know, go through this webinar with you all today and answer any questions you may have. Cool. Thank you. Uh, my, name is, my name is Chris Ralph. I'm the founder of Boulder SEO Marketing. Uh, I used to compete against social SEO <laughs> for a long time. I focus on speaking and teaching uh, globally now about digital marketing. And, um, yeah, super excited to do this webinar with you today here, Rachel. Why don't we get right, right into it? Oh, yeah, here we go. So we teamed up about, man, I think it's about three years ago, uh, which really allows me to speak and teach uh, digital marketing around the globe. That said, enough about us. Uh, we'll talk about social media marketing. It's a key component of your digital marketing strategy. Uh, Rachel, you're going to talk about why is social media marketing so important. You'll walk us through the six steps of a social media strategy and how can you get these results that we're able to achieve for our customers. It's not rocket science. It's a lot of work, but you need to know how to do this stuff right. Uh, success stories, uh, we'll talk about tools that we use uh, for this process here, and then hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for Q&A. Please submit your questions uh, using the chat or Q&A box right there. Then uh, two lucky winners will get complimentary access to uh, my non-technical self-paced SEO and digital marketing training. We'll ask a question, that something that we'll talk about here in the training. And then I guess the first two people that respond will get uh, access to the training. It's a $350 value. So please pay attention. <laughs> Uh, that said, uh, social media marketing, key components of your digital marketing strategy. Um, so basically, these are the three main components of inbound marketing. Uh, Rachel, have you done cold calling uh, in the past? Myself, thankfully, yes. no. <laughs> okay. I don't have the, the personality for that. <laughs> uh, so I used to, early in my career, uh, I, you know, I... I did a sales job, I did cold calling. You know, you can do it for a certain amount of time. It gets a little bit old uh, after a while. So inbound marketing, these are the three components that help us attract uh, or help businesses find us. The first component that I really specialize in is uh, organic search engine optimization. Content marketing is a huge part of SEO, but I would say a standalone content, uh, component. And then, of course, uh, social media marketing, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, really, social media marketing helps Google, uh, as we know, if we talk about organic SEO, it helps Google discover uh, you know, what your website is about, who you are about, the, 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 the links that you potentially tweet about, all that good stuff. So basically, by having a very solid uh, social media marketing strategy, we're also helping Google uh, to sort of like organize the world's information, help them understand who we are, what we do, and essentially, hopefully, get a qualified, uh, a high quality search traffic to our website. All right, and then uh, Google and the other search engines, they team up with social media platforms such as Twitter, etc. So as soon as you tweet something, um, whenever I publish a new blog post, the first thing that I do is actually I tweet about it 
because uh, once you do that, that link will be indexed in Google's database. So you don't have to wait for the Google bot to find um, that page. It will be automatically uh, indexed, which is a huge benefit already uh, when we talk about social media marketing. All right. Uh, also, and Rachel, I'm going to let you talk more about this, but as part of our onboarding process, you know, we make people fill out uh, an onboarding document, and one key component here is like, hey, we need to figure out what social media platforms are your customers using? Where are they hanging out? You know, you don't need to be on LinkedIn if your customers are not there. Yeah. You don't need to be on Pinterest mm -hmm. if, you know, if, they don't, if they're not there. So you'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. That's extremely important. All right. Social media marketing, do you love it? So usually when I uh, host my workshops, I ask that question. And I would say maybe, you know, two or three out of ten people, they absolutely love <laughs> social media marketing. I love it. <laughs> I know. So I, uh, I, I presented a workshop in London last week, and I was lucky enough to be able to go back to Switzerland uh, with my fiancé to visit my family. And, you know, I actually make her post all the, you know, the pictures on uh, Facebook. I just need a break. When I, you know, when I'm on vacation, I don't want to have to deal with social media marketing. But, you know, here's the case why you should love it. You know, this is actually a real customer example where we, you know, we finally get them to love social media marketing and we help them tremendously increase their return on investment. Again, you know, this is not rocket science, but we implemented a strategy that is working, that's resonating well with their target audience. And uh, Rachel, you're here to enlighten us on how to do this. Absolutely. Um, before I hand it over to you, um, I definitely want to encourage everybody to take advantage of Google Analytics. Make sure, understand where is your traffic coming from. Uh, organic search usually converts really well. Uh, this is a real customer example, uh, e-commerce website. Then direct traffic, those are people knowing they, they know your business. Uh, referral traffic is broken out from social media traffic. So definitely, as you can see here, the highest converting traffic is usually organic search traffic. That's what I specialize in. And social media traffic, because uh, you can do wonders with uh, social media marketing. That's it. Uh, Rachel, I'm going to take a break from talking. I'm going to hand it over to you. Please enlighten all right, us. All right. So I get questions all the time when it comes to social media, like, what is this doing for me? What is an engagement? Like, how is that valuable to my business? So I'm going to walk through a couple stats and a couple other points as far as, you know, why social media is actually important for your business. So 30% of millennials actually say they engage with the brand on social media at least once a month. So not only are they engaging with brands, but they're likely following them as well. So it just gives your brand a better opportunity to be seen online. We also have 73% of people following brands on social because they're interested in that product or service. So if you want people to know more about you or you want to grow your customer base, social media is a great way to do that. And then 75% of people purchase something they saw on social media. This stat is extremely eye-opening, I think, for a lot of people because you know, at the end of the day, if one additional channel can influence a purchase for your existing or future customer base, then that's going to just help your bottom line overall. You know, as we showed before, um, when we implement that strategy with our clients, you know, truly 75, about 75% 75 of people, that, that was the effect. They bought something because we engaged with them through social media marketing. So that's a great number. Yeah. Okay, so a couple other points as far as why social media is important. One of the key 
aspect is that it can increase your brand awareness. So not only amplifying the conversation about your brand and your products, but also increasing that content visibility and just strengthening the brand and customer loyalty overall. You can get reviews on Facebook, Yelp, Google+, so the more reviews you have, that credibility strength just increases from there. And when you have high engagement, you've got you know, really good brand loyalty. Then it can also help just grow your business overall, whether you're looking to grow web traffic visits or you know, amplify your content, uh, whether it's a blog article or you know, a podcast you're trying to promote, anything like that. It can also help increase overall conversions of your website and increase the social community. So what that really helps out with is more so on the advertising side um, where you can you know, put paid uh, dollars towards you know, reaching these specific goals and meeting these goals. Um, so we'll go through that, some of that here in a couple more slides. And then lastly, there's tons of other benefits. So not only does social media help you cast a wider net, a net but it's also just the digital form of word of mouth. So referral visits and referral customers, I'm sure everyone has a high percentage of. Um, word of mouth typically accounts for 20 to 50% of purchasing decisions. So social media can help influence that when someone shares you know, they bought this product from this new fun company, that share can help influence other potential buyers. It also just kind of humanizes your brand. It gives your brand a personality. It gives your brand some flavor and um, you know, some excitement when it comes to the products and services that you offer. And then just really strengthening that credibility across the board. So if you're strong on social, you're strong on your website, you're going to have a strong brand overall. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and start jumping into the social media strategy marketing. And you know, typically a social media strategy will want to include six key points. Um, we're going to go through six steps, but these are also six key points that it should include. So you want to look at current state and future state. Where are we at? Where do we want to be? You want to do kind of a light competitor analysis to see, okay, what are my competitors posting? What kind of engagement do they get? How big of a following do they have on social media? So that you know where you need to you know, compete with. It should also include a content strategy, how you're going to publish this content on your social media platforms. What kind of tone of voice are you going to have? What type of content are you going to post? And then if you also are integrating an advertising strategy, you want to you know, list that out as well. Are you going to you know, work on getting more followers to your business page? Are you going to do a page likes campaign? Are you trying to drive web traffic? What kind of campaigns are going to be built around that? And then understanding the data, so setting your key performance indicators and understanding you know, what metrics you want to track and you know, being able to monitor that success. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our six basic steps for an effective social media strategy. Our first step being evaluate where you're at now. So that is where we will perform a social media audit, which I'm going to go into more detail on each uh, one of these bullet points here. But you want to understand your current state. And again, future state. Where do we want to be? What does that look like? Maybe we want to be at 100,000 followers on our Facebook page. How are we going to get there? <laughs> again, how are we going to get there? Perfect. And then what online activities are going to get you there? So are you going to be utilizing Facebook? Are you going to be utilizing Facebook and Instagram? Um, are you going to integrate you know, an advertising strategy? What activities or tactics are you going to use in order to get to your goals? And then establishing how you're going to implement. Are you going to create a content calendar? Are you going to use a social media management program to schedule out content and manage those main KPIs that you're looking to track? And then did it work? Did we get those results that we were looking for? So now I'm going to do a better dive into each one of those aspects to tell you kind of exactly all the key, component, key components of each six step. 
So number one, of course, evaluating our current state. So for us, we will typically provide a social media audit to any new customer that comes on board with us. This is going to take a look at all of their social media profiles that are existing or maybe areas of opportunity where maybe they don't have a LinkedIn profile and they would probably benefit from it because they're B2B or they sell you know, an educational product, anything like that. Then we want to look through and make sure our profiles are optimized. So do we have all of the profile information filled out? Is there a contact email? Do we have a contact phone number it's filled out in there so that customers can easily reach us? Do we have enough content in our profile description so that Google and these other social platforms can find us easily? We'll go through some of that in the next, next couple of slides as well. Oh, and then also if I can add something. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> so for SEO, search engine optimization mm -hmm. purposes, it's actually super important that you have claimed your Google My Business listing uh, because it's now actually a part of a ranking signal. So the better optimized or completed your business listing is, it will also support your organic search engine optimization. So very important. Yeah, and that comes full circle when it comes to the connection between SEO and social media. You know, what main keyword phrases you're targeting on a website, you want to make sure that you're integrating that into your profiles and content strategy on social media so that Google and these other social platforms better understand what it is you're offering and what searches may you know, be found under for you. Um, then we want to go ahead and just analyze our audience. So who is already following us? What age ranges do they fall under? Maybe you can find out specific interests and behaviors that they have using some of Facebook's tools and also Google's tools. So Google Analytics provides that data as well as far as who's visiting your website. You can take a look at their age, their gender, and uh, some of the other like location aspects as well. And then ensure that your brand is consistent across all social media channels. So you don't want to have a different logo for Facebook than you have for Twitter, or you want to make sure that your cover photo is very telling of what it is you offer as a business. It shouldn't be you know, something that's non-descriptive or something that someone's going to be confused about when they look at your social media profiles. <clears throat> and then keep an eye out for duplicated pages. So. With, when it comes to duplicated pages, if you've already created a business profile for your business, make sure you try to get access to that first before you go building another page. Um, the inconsistency that comes with duplicated pages can just confuse users and also search engines. So making sure that your profiles are streamlined, there's no duplicated accounts out there, and if there are, you know, either removing them or merging them into an existing account. This is a quick look at one of our social media audits that we perform for our clients. As you can see, we look at every single profile that they're active on. And this particular client actually had a duplicate Google Plus account. And when we were looking at it, the customer was only posting to his personal page and not even his brand page. So we were like, okay, well, you know, that's all great, but in order for us to be successful for your brand, we want to kind of shift gears and start posting on your main business page. This audit really takes a look at a current state snapshot. So this particular account had almost 23,000 likes, a um, little over 22,000 actual people following them. We can tell that there's a custom URL present. So if you don't have a custom URL on your pages, you'll want to make those consistent as well. So you want facebook.com backslash social SEO, twitter.com backslash social SEO. You don't want those to differ too much uh, because of that just branding consistency and the user experience of people just trying to find you online. And then we go through, you know, is the profile optimized? Do we need to add in more content? Is their website link even correct? Um, we go through, you know, looking at their last post, if there's any engagement on those posts, and really just determining, okay, this is where we're at, and now we can create a strategy around that to improve upon. 
Oh, and hey, Rachel, um, are, are you okay if we share the slides in PDF format with the audience? Absolutely. Okay, no great. Problem. So everybody will get the link to the recording as well as the uh, link to the slides in PDF format. Okay. So when it comes to optimizing your social profiles, this is just an example of our social SEO account. Uh, Facebook has integrated some new features with their cover photos. As you can see in the video, we have a video playing in our cover photo. This really is just telling people what we do as a business, and it's just a fun little interactive video. You can do slideshows within there, you can just do a normal image, um, but there's a lot of cool options to make your page more fun and engaging for your potential customers. And then on the image on the right, we can see like, wow, Social SEO has a lot of information included in here. We've got you know, our mission statement in there, we've got a place for people to contact us, whether it's phone, email, or our other social media profiles. And then we've got just more information about you know, our awards, the services that we offer, and our story as a company, which Social SEO is founded. Um, we, we actually rebranded from Pikes Peak SEO about two and a half years ago. And um, ever since then, you know, our, our company has just been growing like crazy. We're, we're based in Colorado Springs, so it's always fun to you know, have a beautiful state to, to work in as well. Okay, so once you really determine your current state, now we need to look at our future state. Where do we want to be? Typically, people who write down their goals are 30 times more successful. So this is why developing a written plan for your social media strategy is so important. Think of it as a business plan for your social media presence. So we want to make sure that we understand our current business challenges and set goals around them. Are you struggling getting people to your website? Let's you know, try to gear people towards engaging with our content and navigating through to our website. Once you set those goals, what are your objectives going to be? We need to make sure that our goals are specific enough and achievable nonetheless. We don't want to set a goal for obtaining 100,000 likes on our Facebook page in six months when you're just starting out. That's going to take time to build over you know, a longer period of time. Now, if you put some paid behind it, you know, that time frame does cut down some, but we, w we just want to make sure that those goals are realistic and obtainable. And these are some goals to consider. So when it comes to social media, we have the ability to increase brand awareness. That can be done through organic content posting or even on the advertising side. Always, always, always want to focus on increasing your social engagement. When you increase social engagement, you have a better chance of showing up for your content within the social news feeds. So Facebook is just so friendly in that they only allow your post to reach about 2 to 6% of your entire audience following. So if your page has 1,000 likes on it, only 2 to 6% of those people are actually going to see your content. So when it comes to engagement, you always want to look at that as a key metric because engagement is going to drive more reach and you know, further shares and comments and likes on your content. We also could you know, bring more users to the website or boost event attendance. So if you, you know, run a bunch of different events, you can actually boost the attendance of that using social media. And then improving ROI. Obviously, you know, if we can get money and new customers out of social media, that's something that we would want to do. And while there's a ton of different tactics included in that, you know, it is a way to improve your overall return on investment. Okay, so we've already established where we're at, where we want to be. Now, how do we get there? So in order to develop your strategy, there's a couple key components within this. You want to do some of the audience research. So what platforms are my customers on? You're not going to utilize Snapchat as a platform for trying to reach a retirement community. Um, you're likely not going to use you know, Instagram to target mom and dad. Um, platforms have very specific demographics and um, generation roles behind them. So doing a little research behind that will be extremely valuable as far as what platforms you should be on for social media. 
And then develop your content strategies. So how frequently should we post? Is once a week really enough? In this day and age, it's not. Uh, the more frequent you can post, the better off you're gonna, the better chance you're gonna have of having your content be seen. And then what are the best times to post? I'll actually give you guys a couple tips on this here in the next couple of slides, but the time of day certainly matters. You don't wanna be posting content at 2 a.m. in the morning when your audience is you know, in mountain time. Nobody's gonna see that, they're gonna be asleep. So making sure that you're posting at high engagement times is extremely valuable for your content strategy. Then you wanna determine what tone of voice we wanna have. Are we gonna be funny? Are we gonna be informational or educational? What does that tone of voice look like for your brand? And then what type of content are we publishing? Are we just publishing videos? Are we looking at a good healthy mix between articles, quotes, infographics, and so on? Typically, when it comes to our customers, we like to follow what's called the 80-20 rule. And so 80% of the time, we're gonna be publishing content that is relevant to the industry and engaging. That could include articles, it could include video, blog posts, um, it could include you know, images, quotes, anything like that where that other 20% of the time is used for promotional content, so really selling your product or service. Now this can vary depending on the brand, but it's a pretty good baseline uh, to start out with when it comes to developing your content strategy. And then you wanna develop a calendar. So what are you gonna be posting and what days are you gonna be posting it? Having a calendar just helps keep you organized so you're not having to get in there every single day and try to figure out something to write. It certainly helps cut back your time. While you may have to put a little more time on the, the front end of that, you know, spending two hours a day or you know, two hours on a weekend to develop your content calendar for the month versus getting in there every single day and potentially wasting time because your, your head's just not in it. When it comes to writing content, your head certainly needs to be in that creative space. And then we wanna evaluate our competitors. So again, looking at those competitor profiles and determining, okay, how often do they post? What type of content are they posting? How many followers do they have on their social media accounts? And then determine what metrics you wanna track. Uh, engagements, for sure, is, should be right up at the top, and you know the reach of your overall posts as well. Follower growth, is certainly important and you know it's an important metric to track because those could be your future customers so as that grows your potential customer base grows with it <clears throat> okay this is a look at just an example of a content calendar that we would typically provide to one of our clients we break it out by platform because not every platform is going to be the same when it comes to posting on Twitter, you wanna utilize your hashtags, you know, two to three per post in order to get more engagement and more potential for reach on that platform. Facebook and LinkedIn don't really have a robust hashtag usage. And so you're probably not gonna use more than two or three hashtags on Facebook. You'll, you'll wanna shoot for maybe one and make it more of a branding or you know, a trending sort of topic. And then we have Instagram, where you can have up to 30 hashtags in a post. And so that only helps amplify your content and you know, increase the potential engagement on that as well. So this content calendar really helps us visualize what that content is going to look like on each and every single platform we're posting to. Now, content isn't going to be the end-all, be-all solution to your social media strategy. Over the last couple of years, Facebook has greatly decreased their potential reach and engagements of social media posts. And so very much so we're, we're being in that we're in that play to play, pay to play world. And so when it comes to your social media strategy, you want to think about advertising as well, because if you're just starting out, it's going to take you a long time to build up that organic presence. Whereas if you had some paid you know, spend behind that, you would have a little bit of a shorter timeline as far as accomplishing your goals. 
How much? I have a question. How yeah. much do you recommend spending at least on advertising? Let's say if somebody wants to get started with Facebook. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to spending on Facebook, their minimum spend per day is about five dollars for ads and one dollar for a boosted post. So I would always say start small, you know, maybe a $200 to $300 budget, and then grow that over time once you start to really better understand your audience and how they're interacting with your paid promotions. Okay, and recently I want to mention that a lot of people have told me that attend my workshops that actually Facebook is working really well for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of great success with our customers utilizing Facebook. It's not the only platform we advertise on, but it's certainly one of the most cost-effective and higher-performing platforms for us. Cool. Cool. So with that pay-to-play kind of strategy, you want to think of what what is called the conversion funnel. So this is a pretty basic example of what your conversion funnel could look like. That top tier is the awareness stage. So these are people who probably have never heard of you before, probably have never seen a product like yours, or maybe they have from a competitor, but you want to stand out to them um, above your competitors. So this is going to be that awareness stage where you're just trying to get people to know more about your brand. And then we jump into the consideration phase. So these are people who have maybe seen you once or twice on social media, maybe they've visited your website, maybe not, or they could be those existing customers. And then we push them down into that transactional phase. So making them convert, and how are we going to do that? Is it going to come with a content strategy, or is it more geared on the advertising side? You want to think about your strategy in this way so that you are driving people to the right places at the right time. If you're trying to drive someone to purchase and they don't even know who you are yet, the likelihood of that happening is pretty slim. And then I'm just going to give you guys a couple examples of some social advertisements. That first one being a Shop Now campaign for what looks like jeans or some sort of clothing. This is actually an Instagram ad. Facebook bought out Instagram in 2012, so they actually share the same advertising platform. And then we've got, this is a LinkedIn-sponsored post. So not only can you boost your posts on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, but you also have that opportunity to drive people to your website or collect leads within this platform. This is an example of just a right-hand desktop ad. This is always displayed on Facebook, um, but this will typically be seen in the right-hand side of your newsfeed. Just quick little simple ads. And this is something that you would typically see in your Facebook newsfeed. So as you can see, it says sponsored right underneath the brand name. And then they're actually promoting this video. They do have a link in here, um, but my guess is that they're just really trying to get people to view this video and show, you know, how wonderful the fall foliage is in Wisconsin. (laughs) Okay. So now, what tactics are we going to use? How many times are we going to post to Twitter? How many times are we going to post to Instagram? Do we need to establish an advertising budget if that's the avenue that we want to get into? So when it comes to posting best practices, there are optimal times per day, each day, that you want to post on your social platform. So typically on Facebook, you know, the later half of that week is the most or the highest engagement time, and then, you know, anywhere from 9 a.m. and 1 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Now, this can change based on the people following your page. So on the right side there, you can see this particular page has the highest engagement kind of in the evening hours, but it's relatively even throughout the day. And then we can see what our activity is for each day. So within Facebook, they have what's called their insights tool, and it'll actually tell you all of this information about your audience, when they're online, when they're active, and what days they're active. And we also have that for Instagram as well. If your Instagram is converted to a business account and you have more than 100 followers, you can actually begin to see the insights within that platform as well. So it's going to tell you the best hours during a day to post or even the best days to post which is pretty awesome, especially when you're developing that content strategy. 
best times of day for Instagram are typically Monday and Tuesdays, usually first thing in the morning between that 8 and 9 a.m. time frame or in the evening hours as people are sitting on their couch scrolling through their news feeds. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Twitter and Pinterest. Twitter, the most popular day is Wednesday, uh, typically 12 or 3 p.m. However, you just want to kind of gauge this, you know, based on your audience following. Pinterest is a little unique because most Pinterest users are women. I believe it's about 90% are women. And typically they're looking at their feed right before bed, as you can see, 9 o'clock in the evening, or maybe they can't sleep and they're scrolling through that at 2 a.m. So while 2 a.m. might not be an optimal time for you to post your content on Pinterest, it could be an optimal engagement time for people to see that content. And then we have LinkedIn and Google+. So LinkedIn is typically midweek and around the times where people are not working. So whether it's first thing in the morning, over the lunch hour, or right after work, those are typical LinkedIn users. They're very business savvy and are busy throughout the day. So when they get a chance, that's typically during that time frame. And Google+, while you may not think of it as a social platform, uh, it definitely has its benefits when it comes to SEO. Typically they say if you post your Google Plus business profile every 72 hours, you have a better chance of ranking your site on Google. And so we like to use Google Plus for a lot of our local clients because it just helps amplify their positioning in maps or you know, with their brand or even driving you know, web traffic to particular blog articles or anything like that. And now, the very recently Google My Business now also allows you to post. Yes. So one more platform that you need to take care of, right? Yes. Yeah, so there's Google Plus and then there's Google My Business. It's similar products. Uh, they have their brand pages and their location pages. And for location pages, you can actually do location-specific posts. So if you're running a promotion for a particular store, you could actually post onto Google My Business and that post will be active for about seven days. So that information will show up in search results, which is pretty fun. <clears throat> All right, now we're at the implementation stage. How are we going to implement? What kind of plan are we going to have? So typically when it comes to implementation, you want some sort of software or calendar that you can keep track of. Now you can do this manually with you know, a Google spreadsheet or Excel spreadsheet, or you can utilize you know, a tool like Hootsuite or Sprout Social in order to track these efforts for you and implement these efforts for you. So we utilize Sprout Social. We're actually a Sprout Social agency partner, and we use their platform for scheduling purposes as well as reporting purposes. So it allows us to schedule out posts any time of day. Um, we can customize it per platform, and then we can also report back on how those posts are performing. And what's really important is you know, understanding how you're going to respond to your social media community. Now, if your page has you know, 20,000 or 100,000 followers on it, you're likely going to get a lot of activity as far as people commenting, sharing, or even messaging your business. So understanding how you're going to respond to those users is vital because you don't want to keep them in the dark. You don't want to be silent. You want to make sure that if they are reaching out to you, you're able to direct them in the right way. There's you know, systems in place as far as bot builders that you can use in order to you know, drive people to the right place on the website. If they're looking for you know, uh, products, then you can drive them to the products page. If they're looking for customer service, you can drive them to a customer service number. There's a lot of cool tools out there for you to really just maintain the communication from your users on social media. <clears throat> And then lastly, did you get those results that you wanted? This is always a refining, tweaking, and adjusting process. Not every strategy that is first created is going to be the right one. So we want to make sure that we're making those adjustments along the way. We need to make sure that our analytics or tracking is properly installed. If you're not seeing any traffic coming to your website from social media, maybe there's something wrong. Let's take a look at that. And then do you have the right metrics in place to measure that success? 
If you're looking to get web traffic visitors, but you're only tracking new people following your page, is that really leading us to success? So we want to make sure those, those KPIs are really defined. And is your social media audience doing what they want them to, what you want them to? Did you see an increase in web traffic, increase in conversions? Are you getting more engagement and more followers? If that's the case, then awesome job, you're on the right track. And then do you have a reporting uh, process? Are you looking to report on those metrics month to month? What platform are you going to use or are you going to keep track of that manually? And then which platforms are providing the best success? Maybe you realize that Twitter is just not the place for your business, but you're getting a lot better boost from your Facebook and Instagram profiles. That could certainly happen. Um, so just really determining, you know, where am I seeing the best success and evaluating your strategy from there. All right, so now we're going to jump into a little success story from one of our social SEO clients. They came on with a rebranding problem, meaning they didn't do it right at all. They didn't let anybody know that they were rebranding, which blew my mind. <laughs> and what happened was they had a huge, massive drop in traffic because they just didn't let people know that they're a new brand now. And so once they came on board with us, within that first six months, we really put a pretty heavy content strategy in place and also some advertising to just re-educate their existing following about who they are now and why they should you know, interact with this new brand. So within that first six months, we grew their web traffic users up 546% in addition to their followers. We gained them an additional almost 2,500 followers organically. We didn't put any paid efforts towards growing new followers. A majority of that did help uh, by running giveaways so that we got some high engagement and followers out of that. But, you know, there's tons of different strategies out there as far as growing your overall audience base. And then that grew at 410%. Tons of engagement, so just amplifying their reach and you know engaging with their current and future audiences, and then their content was just seen a lot more. So some really great results as far as the overall social engagement, but also we increased conversions. At the end of the day, they want sales, and we developed a strategy that got them there. So they were getting maybe $500 you know, within six months of their last, um, you know, analytics report, and we grew that over 500% to a little bit over $3,500. $3, so just in six months, we completely turned around this brand, got them the engagement and user community that they're looking for, and increased their follower base pretty exponentially. All right. So All right. Chris, take it away. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, before we get to the uh, giveaway quiz, you're going to ask a question, right? I am. Okay. Uh, let's real briefly, I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite tools. Uh, I'm as unhandy as can be. I cannot fix anything at home. You know, if I do, I need tools. Uh, same thing with social media marketing, right? You need tools to get the stuff done. Uh, first of all, we spoke about Google Analytics. Make sure track uh, setup goals in Google Analytics to make sure that you can see that what you're doing is actually working. Um, then. For uh, many of our clients, we use Google Docs to track basic information when it comes to organic SEO. You know, we're getting more organic search traffic, but you can, of course, also track, you know, are we getting more followers on LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. So that's an easy way to track, um, you know, see the success of your efforts. Then, uh, as Rachel uh, presented before, we use Google Docs for uh, developing social media messaging content and then port it over into publishing tools. Uh, Rachel, you're going to talk about uh, publishing tools, yep, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, then also a cool tool that I like is called BuzzZumo. It basically will tell you based on a keyword search, you know, what type of content is trending, how many likes or like engagements on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. is the stuff getting. So that's a great way to identify content that you, you know, don't copy the content, 
but uh, why not get some ideas about content that could potentially do well online. Then, of course, also Google Trends, uh, a great tool that will give you a lot of insights on what's currently trending. You know, is it going up or down? So you have all this insight available to you, uh, you know, right on the computer, right there. Then another cool tool is called Hashtagify. I mean, all these social media platforms basically now use hashtags. You get a lot of insight with that tool, and I, you know, I usually use the free version, so you'll get a ton of information out of this tool. Then uh, inboundly, inbound.li is a content creation uh, platform. You basically do a search for a keyword. You get all kinds of settings there. You know, do you want infographics, videos, how long, word count, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, you know, as uh, Rachel mentioned, you can't just uh, blow your own horn all the time. The 80/20 rules. People get sick of, you know, if you only publish stuff about yourself. This tool will provide you with information about, you know, content, third-party content that you could publish, uh, enlighten your audience. And then check this out. So this cool, uh, cool tool called Snipply. Um, basically, you'll grab a link to a third-party piece of content right up there into the URL. You can create a call to action. In this case, uh, I used it to promote this webinar here. You could create a snip, and then it creates an overlay that, you know, when I now post that Snipply link, people will see a call to action at the bottom of this, you know, third-party web page, and it's driving traffic back to my website, and actually quite a few people signed up this way by me using Snipply. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. All right. Woo, that was it. Uh, Rachel, why don't we, you briefly, uh, what, let's do the question for the, the two sure. uh, licenses to the online training. So if you're ready, first two people providing the right answers will get the uh, online training. Okay. So as we kind of covered a lot of information, we went through some big st statistics on social media. So if the first two people can tell me what percentage of people purchase something because they saw it on social media, what is that percentage? Wow, oh that God. was so fast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, great. Stephanie and Alex, Good awesome job. You guys. job. <laughs> Man, you know what? Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead. Uh, Dan and Kelsey, uh, you'll also get access. Nice. Yeah. That came in like... I mean, you got all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, Stephanie, Alex, and Dan, Kelsey, um, you'll, I'll sign you guys up. Actually, if you don't mind, send me an email, please. Chris, I'll send you my email right here. Uh, holy cow. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so shoot me an email um, so that I can make sure I sign you up. Then, Rachel, back to you. You all have another offer? Yeah, so not only do we utilize Sprout Social and we're an agency partner, but if you guys would like to try it out for your business for 30 days, I can get you guys a free 30-day trial. So feel free to just email me, R-A-C-H-E-L, at socialseo.com, and I will get you guys hooked up. And then I'll also include the link in the follow-up email. Perfect. right? Yep. And you're available for questions. Yes. Okay. Yep. That said, let's go to uh, conclusion and Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions, now is the time uh, to ask us. We still have a little bit of time. So we did receive some emails. Unfortunately, I didn't print it out. Uh, Rachel, I think a question that I remember, uh, somebody asked, should they uh, have their intern do social media marketing or should they actually invest into somebody higher paid to do social media marketing? Yeah, we get this all the time where their son or granddaughter is running their social media accounts. While that generation knows how to use social media, they probably don't know how to use it in a way that's going to be effective to drive your business goals. So. I would definitely choose investing in it because at the end of the day, you're going to get an expert that knows the ins and outs of the platforms and knows how to drive results. All right, awesome. Uh, Kayla asked, uh, what would be your top recommendation for growing followers for a B2B? 
Yeah, so, you know, when it comes to growing followers, there's tons of different things that you can do. Not only do you want to have a consistent content strategy in place, but you have to have some sort of outreach method. So if you're a small B2B company, utilize Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, your connections, your family and friends to start sharing your content and you know, the information about your business. The more outreach you can have, the faster you're going to see that follower growth increase. Now you could also you know, put some paid spend behind that and drive you know, obje- an objective for getting followers, whether it's on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Those options are certainly available to help you know, shorten that timeline. Awesome. Um, another question that we received by email, if you outsource social media marketing, like what, how much do our customers pay on average? If you can walk us through that real quick. Sure. So our average customer pays anywhere from eight, $800 to $1,000 a month on our social media services. Now, that certainly depends. We have different packages available, but if you're looking for you know, just someone to manage it very quietly, you'll probably, you know, be able to find something a little cheaper than that. But um, typically our customers are, you know, between that $800 and $1,000 range. Okay, cool. All right. And then we also have some ask, you know, if I have 20,000 likes on my Facebook page but are struggling to get engagement, how can I fix this? What should I do? So one thing I would always recommend is taking a look at your social media insights tools. That's really going to give you some insight as to who your followers are. One thing that we've found out with a couple clients is they they have paid to get likes in the past. And unfortunately, they used programs that bought spammy likes. And so we had a a client who had over 15,000 of his 22,000 followers that were from India and didn't speak English. So that was a huge impact on his overall engagement with his social media posts because these people are in a foreign country and, you know, can't really understand the content that's being displayed plus plus their spam. So when it comes to struggling with engagement, you know, work out a consistent content strategy, making sure that you are creating content that you think your audience is going to engage with, doing some of that audience research and then test out some boosted posts. That's going to just amplify your chances of being seen, and it can kind of give you some insights as far as, you know, how is my content performing? Did this boost actually provide more engagement, or do we need to switch up our content strategy? Awesome. (laughs) And then somebody asked, uh, are we going to do an an in-person workshop? Yes. So we actually, uh, I think we set the date for August 28th, uh, most likely in Denver, so I'll include information about that in our follow-up email. And then let's see, Alex, uh, do you have any suggestions on getting other people in the organization to help create content? For example, taking photos, uh, at site visits, etc. Actually, Alex, um, as part of the training uh, in August in Denver, I'll also present a LinkedIn engagement, uh, employee engagement program. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about that. But Rachel, over to you. Yeah, employee engagement is a great way to honestly just amplify your existing social strategies. We've implemented something similar here at Social SEO to where we encourage people to share our content online, take pictures, send it to me or, you know, another social media specialist. So we really encourage that kind of, you know, cross promotion within the company because at the end of the day, we really want to brag about how fun and exciting our company is. And so we have a lot of great personalities here that help us do that. Um, so really, I would establish an employee you know, social media policy, provide them with some guidelines as far as you know, what type of content should be shared on your, your social media profiles, and how you can direct people if they do reach out inquiring about your product or service. All right, awesome. Gosh, uh, we're sort of nearing the end. Uh, Rachel, any last uh, last tips, conclusion, other words of enlightenment? Yeah, don't ignore it. <laughs> don't <laughs> ignore your social media presence because it can certainly, you know, help just expand your overall, you know, awareness as a brand. So, you know, test it out. Don't be afraid of it. And, you know, if you guys need. Uh, 
question or answers on questions or strategy tips, just reach out to me and let me know, and I can help you out. Cool, awesome. Uh, Rachel, you're a social media marketing rock star. Thanks so much for doing this uh, webinar. You now manage a team of five. Yes. Uh, I predict it's going to grow. Yes. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're here to answer any questions. Thanks so much, and we'll hope to see you next time. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.